All right, guys, what's going on? Vital Fishing here. A little bit different video today. We're actually not fishing. I'm actually showing you my Bass Tracker Classic built in extension deck. I should say I didn't build it. My buddy Dylan built it. He was kind enough to, to reach out and he said, hey, let me build you a deck. I think he was tired of fishing in the back of the boat. He's pretty excited about that because he gets to fish in the front now. So this, this Bass Tracker Classic, great little boat, great boat for the money. Um, I've kind of tricked mine out. Still a few things I want to do to it, but so far it's been an awesome boat. I mean, it's not your $60,000, $70,000 bass boat, but it gets you on the water, and I catch a lot of fish in it, so it does me well. Before, this this boat had such a small casting deck that there was times that I would almost fall off. I mean, you had to be careful. I'll show you in a second. You'd step back, and you would you could literally fall off, and you had all this unused room that really did you no, no good. Something this boat really lacked is storage. I mean, I got a lot of gear. I like to carry a lot of gear. You never know what you're gonna need to throw. And this back storage, I mean, pretty good storage in the back. I mean, I had all my 360, or excuse me, 370 boxes back there. All my soft plastics I would tuck up under the front, and I'd also have some of these seats that have storage, but I was really lacking that storage when a co-angler would come on. So if a co-angler came on the boat, they would have their, their bag full of baits. You know, most of the my buddies bring their five rods and their big bags of, of all their 370 boxes. And there's really nowhere to put it, you know, it'd just be in the way. The net would always get in the way. There was nowhere to put a net. Dylan did an outstanding job. I'm really happy with it. It's I fished at Roosevelt yesterday. We did pretty good, but it's a night and day difference. I mean, you have so much room up here. Before, I kind of considered it more of a fishing boat, but now it's kind of like a little mini bass boat. So with that being said, let's get into it and I'll show you what he did. So before all I had to put my boxes in was this back storage and Coingler really had nowhere to put his gear except in the middle of the boat. And people were tripping on it, it always got in the way. So I have all my boxes back here, all my 370 boxes. Pretty big storage, I mean, plenty of room, but that is now gonna be entirely for the Coingler. I might put a little bit of stuff back here. We'll see, I might put a divider in it, but I have to move all those to the front. Haven't done it yet, but this is the casting deck. And your first question is, oh, you got a gap right there, you know, we might step in it. But honestly, I mean, that's such a small space and my rods are always there. I put my rods on the deck. That's the next thing I need to do is I need to put a uh, some rod straps on there. Kind of out of breath right now. It's kind of cold out here. It's getting chilly. The sun's starting to go down. Probably should have filmed this earlier. But look at this storage right here. And this thing is freaking awesome. You'll see most people are doing their Bass Tracker Classic deck, ex deck extensions right at this mark where the live oil is and it goes straight across. I told Dylan, you know, why not make it a little bit better, bigger? So we put it all the way back here. He built some hatches in it, marine treated plywood. And then, I think it's plywood, I don't know, some kind of marine treated wood. He put some paint on it to treat it, but carpeted it, riveted it. Um, he's got, this is all aluminum in here. You can't see it, but it's all aluminum frame and it's got these hatches. So, I mean, look at that, that's a lot of storage in there. I'm gonna be able to fit a lot of gear in there. Got that one. I'm probably gonna put all my 370 boxes on this side, and then I'll put all my, my plastics and miscellaneous stuff up there. And I still have access, you can see in there, I got all my, that's where all my plastic usually are, in that front little storage. So I'll, st I'll probably put life jackets because I don't really use those too often. So I'll put all those back there, all my plastics here, and I'll have all my gear up here, which is awesome. Same carpet, match it. You can tell this carpet, the original is pretty matted down. I gotta brush that up maybe with some uh, shaving cream and get that looking good again but new carpet's awesome very well done i mean look at that even the little corner spot right there filled in awesome job but i mean it's, it looks like it's from the factory i mean get a different view from up front i have so much space up here so i have a recessed tray which is awesome i got the cool foot because i like to fish barefoot a lot you can see how much more space this boat has now I'm sure you also could tell one of my previous videos when i first did a review on this boat i had the Minn Kota edge 45 pound and it does the job but if it gets windy out or if there's current you're you're screwed i mean you literally can't even fish so one of the first things i did i put a Minn Kota fortrex on here 80 pound i got my it's a us2 but I don't use that transducer. I got my Garmin transducer right there. There's so much extra space, it's crazy. I mean, 
This boat is the ultimate river boat. I've ran in 10 inches of water. I ran in eight inches of water. I dinged up my prop. So that 10 inch mark, that's the shallowest I can run in this. But you can see just beached on this bank right here at Saguaro, how little of the boat is actually in the water. I mean, you're barely even touching. I mean, even the back part with the batteries, I got three batteries now because I got 24 volt. It's barely even in the water, but it's awesome. I mean, look at that. It looks like it's part of the boat. I mean, you couldn't even tell. But speaking of upgrades, that Minn Kota Fortrex, huge up upgrade. I don't think I'll get an Altrex. I'll probably get another boat before I do that. But Fortrex works fine. I mean, spot lock would be awesome, but it is what it is. You can go through trees and bushes, whatever. These things are tough. Really, the only other upgrade, I mean, you saw in my first Bass Tracker video, I got a 93 SV Garmin, and then I got a 73 SV on the dash. Um, the Garmin's are decent. I mean, I like them a lot. I don't know what's going on. I'm getting some crazy interference, especially when I use my trolling motor. I mean, literally will black out my screen until I stop using the trolling motor. So if you're dropping on fish, it makes it pretty tough. So I got to figure that out. I mean, this is something everyone can do. I mean, it's, you got to be skilled. I mean, I probably, or actually I know I wouldn't have done near as good a job. Dylan did a state. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, you can't even tell it's, it's an add on. It looks like it's part of the boat. There used to be this four uh, rod locker right there. I don't ever use that rod locker. You can see there's actually, I guess you can't even see it, but they're still there. Um, that's where I put my net. So I got to get an, a tie down right here to hold my net in, but it really doesn't go anywhere unless there's a big wave. But that way I'm up here fishing. Got a good size fish on, I need to grab it. Just grab the net, slides out, it's ready to go. It's out of the way, it's tucked in there. So that's awesome, but another cool thing, the passenger's sitting right here. They can put their feet up, whatever. I'm driving, plenty of space. You can see it just tucks under. It's a game changer, I mean. It's so much extra space that it's something that I didn't do for like a year and a half and I really regret not doing it earlier because it's honestly such a game changer. So if you guys are wanting to do it and you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I mean, I'll put you in touch with Dylan. Uh, if you're local in the Phoenix, Arizona area, uh, I don't know, maybe Dylan will build you one. You gotta pay him, but. With that being said, let's go ahead and check out some footage of this deck being built. I mean, it's, it's awesome, so stay tuned.
All right, guys, I appreciate you watching this video, this Bass Tracker classic modification video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. I really appreciate it. But a huge shout out to Dylan Long. I mean, great fisherman, um, great friend. He did this. I mean, didn't charge me anything. I just paid for materials. It was his idea, actually. He wanted to do it, uh, mainly because he was tired of fishing in the back. He wants to fish up front and get those, those casting angles. Um, maybe I was backboating him a little bit. Who knows? But huge shout out to him, I really appreciate it. I mean, this is awesome. It's totally game changer, changed the boat entirely. And a lot of people will do just, just wood over the top and they won't do any hatches. In my opinion, that's a huge waste of space. I mean, if you're gonna do it, put hatches in it, just because that, I mean, I literally can have, I have more storage in the front now than I do in the back and that's gonna be awesome. I don't have to tell the co-angler to get up out of the way so I can get boxes out, it's right in front of me. Appreciate it guys, stay tuned. Out here at Saguaro, through the swim bait today. Didn't catch anything. I caught some yellow bass in the afternoon, but uh, swim bait bite's been tough. So we're gonna keep fishing a little bit until the sun goes down. And if I catch one, I'll show you guys. I don't think I'll catch one, but we'll see. So see you guys later.